This morning I'm with John Carter, PDAC 2024. It's day three. How are you, John? I'm very well, thank you. And you? And you? I'm very good. You are my source. This is my source for silver. Every time I want to know about silver, it's a silver bullet mine CEO, John Carter, that I call. So Arizona, silver, can we have an update? Yes, of course. Um, we, as you know, we've built a, a, a 125 metric ton per day uh, processing facility. And, uh, and Tracy has a picture of it down there. And three years ago, it was cactus, cowboys, and rattlesnakes. And now it's a full functioning uh, high efficiency gravity circuit that we process silver bars from our uh, mine, which is about eight miles away. And uh, it's, a, it's we own the whole plant, we own the property, and uh, we're looking to move into a production scenario. And what that will enable us to do is to reduce our, or reduce our dilution by reducing the nece necessity for us to have to go out and borrow money from our shareholders by doing financings and use that to explore our over 5,000 acres. So I'm going to back, everybody out there is going, wait, uh, can I, do you mind if I see this? By all means. All right, so this is poured at Silver Bullet Mines right, right now. Yes. So yes. you're an exploration company that's already in production that is already generating revenues. Is that correct? Right. That's the plan, right? The plan is, is to be an exploration company, but not an exploration company that has to finance to do the exploration. We will finance ourselves by generating revenue from our mine and our mill. One of the first, we're gonna do another one this year, but right now we're focused on getting Arizona up into a position where we can then generate it. We have a complete exploration program, but we're gonna generate revenue to pay for that rather than end up with 300 million shares outstanding. Well, because I'm such a fan of Silver Bullet, John, and of course, John had our highest record breaking numbers on our YouTube channel for likes. Um, would you mind looking into that camera yes. and telling us the top three reasons why an investor should be doing their due diligence at looking at silver bullet mines. Well, the top three reasons, number one, obviously, is our structure. Our structure is designed to protect our shareholders. The worst thing about junior mining, in my opinion, just as an opinion who's lost a lot of money in it, like everybody else in this business, is that if you hit it, great. If you don't hit it, next thing you know, your stock is being consolidated and, the next, and, and you're moving on to the next event. I don't want that to be us. We've got a really tight share structure. We have 69 million shares outstanding of which we control about half of it and, or, or good hands. And that way, by generating revenue, I don't have to go out, especially with our prices down the way they are in all the junior mining. We can just generate revenue, put our profit into our exploration programs. And that way we can give them a lot of upside, you know, when the market changes or things improve or we just keep doing what we're doing. But the idea for me was always in my business, I exported to over 40 countries. I built over 200 mills. I've been every really nice place in the world to put a plant. And one of thought this is an opportunity for us to take that experience and put that to work by generating a small mine and, and using the home stake approach where you, know, you don't have to have a 43 101. And also I like, I think it was Rob McEwen said, find a mine, the best place to find it is in the shadow of the head frame. So I focus on past producing mines, things that were mined maybe in the, even at the turn of the 20th century, and then we put them into production, follow the vein and do our job and use the money that we generate from that revenue stream to find out, like in Arizona, we have the potential not only for where we are working out of the Buckeye, which is 15.59 acres of you know, 5,000. We have the potential to build a resource on the McMorris and the Silver Sevens and the McClellan. And the other thing, think about it. You know, in, in Arizona or anywhere in North, in North America, you go and dig a hole in your backyard, they call it a mine. Well, we, our mine has a 700 foot shaft, a 250 foot shaft. We have 74 addits. We have two old past producers on it, including one so old that it was an Arista. Now, I don't know if you know what an Arista is, but it's, you know, it's a rock on the ground with a donkey that walks around and you put the ore on it and that's how it gets crushed. Well, we have one of those on our property and we have an old stamp mill, which is the next technology after the Arista. So it's there, we know it's there. And we, it was being out and processed and direct shipped to the smelter in San Francisco. So we know we got it. So let's go in there, let's generate revenue from that, build a resource to give everybody the happy feeling. And then we also have the potential for a porphyry copper. You know, we've done over 800 soil samples on that. And we've come out with 
Over 70% of them were anomalous for copper and silver, as high as 10 ounces of copper, or sorry, 10 ounces of silver and over 1% copper. So there's something going on there. And you say, well, what makes you think that it's there? Well, I look eight miles away and I'm looking into the pit that was the old Freeport McMoran's Miami operation. So, you know, we've got an awful lot of positives going for us. And the grades, again, I can't control the price of silver and I can't control the grade other than it's good grade and it'll continue to improve as we move forward. We've been following silver for a long time. In fact, Jack Lifton on our team tells me that silver is the number one technology metal. So the price of silver right now, should it stay there or do you think it should rise? Can you comment on the price of silver? You know, I get this from my shareholders all the time, call me up and everybody tells me, oh, silver's going to $200, silver's going to $100, silver's going to $50. And I used to, I used to have an opinion at that time. Now I just say, okay, because I can't argue with that. But my own opinion is, Here's the problem with silver in terms of it being $200. I don't think it's going to be $200. What I think, what happens is right now they use it, silver is a lot used in industrial applications. So therefore, it's, it, it's gonna peg it, my opinion only, is gonna peg it a little because if the price goes to $200, you're not gonna be using silver in some of the applications that it's now used in because of its price. And as another example, if you recall back in the day, um, gold was what, $60 an ounce. They were putting two ounces of gold in a, in a Zenith television. You don't see two ounces of gold in a Zenith television anymore. I guess you don't see Zenith anymore either. But, but the fact is, is that if silver goes to $200, they're going to be looking for something else to substitute for it. So I think it's, I definitely think it's going to go up because I think it's, there's, more, there's more demand than there is supply. Uh, but I don't see 200, but you know what? I could see 30 to $50 silver, which for me would be awesome, obviously, because you know I produce 90% concentrated silver. So that's just my personal opinion. But I think that that might cap it is only because of the industrial applications. So not only would I enjoy a picture of an Arista, because I did not know what it was before this interview, so thank you for that. But can you tell me what shareholders should anticipate in the upcoming quarter? Well, what they're going to definitely uh, see is us in production and producing on a regular basis. We just finished getting our MSHAW approval, which, you know, that puts us with the big boys. You know, uh, there's a lot of little mining companies out there that skirt along the edges and don't go to MSHAW or the state uh, mine reporter, uh, recorder. We, we decided we'd do it the other way. We would do it right. It's not a happy place. My shareholders, you know, don't, are, not, are a little upset that it took, believe it or not, that it took three years to where we are. That picture you have, that was a field three years ago. Now it's got a full functioning. We even have our own well, 450 foot well. Some of my shareholders say, well, what are you gonna do for water? We have a well, it's permitted by the uh, Arizona Department of uh, Water Quality. It's there and we own it and we own it all. And everything you see there, we own. So what you're gonna see is this, we hope, obviously if silver stays and everything goes well, we're going to be generating revenue on a continual basis. We're going to take that and start to develop our exploration program. And then we're going to go in and do our Idaho plant. That'll be the next thing. Well, you heard it here. Silver Bullet Mines producing in the United States. For more information, please go to their website. John, as always, it's such a pleasure. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure, as always.